I've been asked to hot rivet the side plate on a semi-auto conversion 1919 machine gun. So let's go on a voyage of discovery of uh, how to heat up, drive rivets, and basically not screw up somebody else's gun. Nineteen nineteen Browning machine gun. The right hand side plate on the nineteen nineteen is the controlled part. This is a replacement semi automatic side plate for the nineteen nineteen, and I've been asked to insert this side plate, and we'll talk about that in a minute, and put all the rivets back in. So the rivets, we'll talk about that in a minute. We're going to put them up. Heat them up with an oxy-settling torch, rattle them down, grind this whole thing flush, sandblast it, and then um, parkerize it. I don't know if we're going to get to the parkerizing today, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll possibly keep you posted on that. The reason why I got sent this thing was because hot rivets are not for the average... They're there, but they're not. I mean, I mean it, it's not hard to do once you understand the zen of it, where all the forces have to go. We'll be down on the floor here in a little bit. We're going to use the floor of the shop to uh, buck this thing. And then we'll talk about bucking bars. Look at that. That says 1919 bucking bar. And we're going to talk about how we're going to transfer all the forces necessary to drive these rivets straight down into this thing. And have it not look like it was made by a trained rat. So there's several pieces that go to this. This piece here. This is the forward block that the barrel comes through. The barrel extension that it was holding in the intro mounts on at the end of this. And the barrel sticks through. Um, and also the main trunnion that the weapon pivots up and down on. Goes right through here. So not only do we have this block that has to get mounted, that block's going to get mounted right there. That's going to mount right there. This cover plate mounts in this position here, in the side of this. And we had to make some custom rivets for it, and we'll do that. But there's a custom rivet that's going to be located, um, where's my finger? Oh, there's my finger. Hang on a minute. Let me put that, bring that up here where you can see that. We have an operational monitor now, so Bruno doesn't have to give me hand signals. Pull out a patent carbon sheath pointing device. There'll be a custom rivet inserted here, a custom rivet inserted here. We'll buck into the back, rattle that in. This is a trunnion support. This trunnion support goes on the right side up here. That will get rattled in. And then there are some honking rivets that we're going to have to put into this. The main rivets that hold this thing together are huge. The, these are the two rivets that, pop, that probably take all the load. Then you've got another one that goes straight through here and then a bunch of small ones. We've also got, this is the forward cartridge stop part that there's a piece that hooks over it. That's self-riveting. And then we have an ejector block. These two will be mounted first into the side plate because we won't be able to get around the other side of them once we get it mounted. This particular weapon wasn't, was, this thing has been around the block a few times. Let's just say that. Let's say the, the last people that got to use it was the Israeli Defense Force. There's, there's uh, markings all over it in uh, a non-English language. Uh, let's say that they just, uh, they, they got their money's worth. All right, so what the heck's a rivet? We've got a, a, a plate, we've got a plate, and let me change colors here. Can we even see that? Man, we are washed out like crazy. Hang on a minute. Whoa, Nelly. Let's try that. Yeah, there we go. I'll tell you what, let's try this. A minute. Dink. There we go. Now you can see what the hell's going on here. We got one plate, and we got another plate, and we want to join them together. Say we're building a skyscraper or a bridge or something. So we had previously drilled a hole through these plates before we brought them up. And some guy would come in with a big thing called a spud wrench. And he would stick this 
this, uh, I don't know, that's kind of hard to see because it's not very dark. Here, is that better? Yeah. So he would stick this wrench through it, line the holes up, and then pull the spud out. And when he pulled the spud out, you'd wind up with two holes that were lined up, and then the guy would be over there with the furnace, zzz, zzz, right? Getting these, getting this rivet hot. Okay, and now the rivet would come in red hot. And they would throw the rivet down in the hole. So here you go. Here's the head on the rivet. And I'm going to exaggerate this. This is the head on the rivet. And then here's the body of it. And it's sticking up. And then ordinarily when you see the pictures of the guys building the Empire State Building, they're banging on it with hammers. We're going to use a power hammer. And what we'll do, we're going to support this on something solid. We'll call something solid the floor. So we're going to set this thing down on the floor and put an air-driven chisel over the top of it and rattle on this thing. And what will happen is this metal will progressively mushroom. It will upset. It will set down until eventually we have this entire recess full of metal. Now we can do a couple of things with this. We can either come back in and grind the top of it off or allow the recess to, to stay. Now here's what happens when you're building a bridge or building a skyscraper. We're not going to get this thing this hot, but if you throw this entire bolt in, and I drew it in red on purpose, and you squish that head down over it, when this thing cools off, when this thing cools off, it draws the two plates together. It'll, it'll shrink longitudinally and suck everything together. And I'm going to tell you, those old buildings that were riveted together, they, they weld now because it's faster, but there's nothing wrong with putting something together with rivets. Okay, so the first thing we got to rivet is this. Um, I'm trying to get this where you can see it. This is an ejector block, and this ejector block is going to mount on the inside of the receiver right here like this. Okay, it's going to mount right there. So that's going to mount with a, with a rivet that goes through the center of it. And i got to make sure I've got the right size rivet and I appear to. Where do those two big jamokers go? Those go there. Okay, here we go. i got the right size rivet now. Right here. So we'll run that rivet through. Run it through the other side of the plate. Rattle that pig home. Eh, get in there, you little bugger. My fingers aren't working. Okay. We'll rattle that home. And then there is a cartridge stop. I'm trying to remember the correct nomenclature. Um, a, a cartridge stop that's self-riveting. So it's got, a, it's got a stud on it here. That will go through that hole. Sorry about my fingers. That'll go through that hole right there. We'll trim it to length, rattle it over into a bulge on the other side. Here we go. We're white on whites, what the problem is. Let me get you a, a background where you can see this thing. Here we go. So there it is. It's up against my index finger, and we'll rattle it through, and we'll knock that down. It'll make its own rivet, and we'll be awesome. So we're going to set up some fire here. We're going to do these two up on top of the vise, but when we come down to do the main rivet holes in the bottom down here that are going to hold this to the side plate, the rivet will go through. We'll set the bucking bar on top of it. And what the bucking bar will do is take the load that we're applying here, take it through the bucking bar, through the other side plate into the floor so we got something solid to hit it up against. All right, let's get jigged up here. We're going to go to the uh, portable work holding, the, um, the, the universal work holding system and uh, go make some heat. Yeah, you see all this magnetic crap hanging off the bottom of this plate? I hate magnetic plates. So follow me here, Bruno. A rather kind gentleman provided me with an electric demagnetizer. Oh, you gotta love that. No fuzz hanging off the plate anymore. Fucking A. Oh, we have fire, yes. Bruno is gonna hold this on the rivets, and I am gonna make some noise. Let fly, sir. So Bruno's gonna get that back rivet hot first. And we're just going to come in and make a little bit of noise. Get her hot, brother. You ready?
Go. Do the other one. Really hot. Get the whole thing hot. All the way down. It doesn't matter if we just colored the steel. Okay, we're there. Okay, we've just made two rivets. Now I'm going to finish up here with a hammer um, just to uh, make sure I've got these where I want them because I want to fill these recesses up. So we're still we're still running. That's a heavy uh, heavy granite block, and we're bucking into a lot of mass. So when I'm hitting this, the hammer is almost literally bouncing. And that's what we're shooting for here, is to be able to take this metal when it's malleable and pound it in. Now we're not really worried about what this is looking like on the outside, because this whole plate's gonna get polished, sandblasted, and parkerized. You won't even know I was here. This gun, gun's been through hell in its life, and I'm hardly part of the problem. can hear it now. There's a hundred different ways to do it. I know I'm doing it wrong. I don't care. At the end of the day here, we're results oriented. The uh, customer that owns this gun has been nice enough to um, allow me to take my time here to make sure I was where I wanted to be before I did it and to allow us to video it. So uh, shout out to the gentleman here that let us have it. All right. We're there. Okay. Remember, folks, this is like making sausage. Um, if you really enjoy eating sausage, you probably ought to watch some fool make it. Okay, here you go now. You just get the end of this hot. You get the end of that one hot. I'm just going to tap it in, all right? The hotter, the better. You can even melt this one a little bit. Now, if it starts to sparkle, that's the carbon in the steel beginning to burn. Can't get her hot, we'll just keep mushrooming it. This is more like blacksmithing than anything else. Okay, keep going. I don't want to deform the inboard edge of the pin, so I'm just dropping the hammer on it. We're in kind of a volume conundrum here, folks, because we've got the gain turned down on a microphone so these hammer beats and this impact wrench we're going to use aren't messing it up so if you can't hear me talking to bruno i'm sorry about that we're going to keep going down until this flushes up and stops moving keep going keep going let her rip let her rip now that it's touching the plate it's going to take a lot longer to heat up now that it's touching the plate because now you got to get the whole plate hot but that has flowed down inside that channel and then we'll just grind all this off because every photograph I've ever seen of one of these, this is filed flush on the outside. Hold what you got. Okay, we didn't, we didn't, uh, we didn't damage the inside and this is nice and tight. One more time. Go ahead and get hot as just get the end of the blue right there. Yeah. I'm running a little bit of a rich flame here. I don't have a lot of oxygen in it just because I don't want to be in a place where I'm burning the carbon out of this. All right, we got it. Stand by, we're gonna go to the next one. I gotta set that up so it'll be a second. We're gonna cut here. All right, I've taken the liberty of cutting a couple of countersinks in places where they probably weren't before. Here you go. And that's what I had to do, I had to set up. So now we're gonna do the um, the, uh, it's a, it's a belt guide. I don't know that here. Right there, a little rip. So all we're doing here is just pushing down on the heads of these and flowing them in. There we go. Okay. But notice we're taking the load straight through to something really heavy. And you can't hear it at this microphone setting but this thing starts clicking, get right in the center the next time, heat it right in the middle, okay? Because where you're heating it is, is determining where it's flowing. See what I mean? 
So I need to make it flow a little bit over to the other side and completely fill that recess, right? There we go. Okay, we got that. Now I'm not gonna quite tighten that up yet. I'm gonna do check something here. Um, okay, we're just about there. All right, we're gonna move on to the next part. Okay, so we have the the stud mounted. We have the ejection gizmo mounted. Guys, I'm sorry, I'm not using the right terminology. I'm not. I've never I've never actually been in the same room with a Browning before. It's just a machine. It's just machine work, but this has been rattled in. That's been rattled in. These rivets here are flush and will be ground all the way down. And remember, they're all in conical holes. So while these look a little rough right now, once they're ground down flat, they're still a they're still a conical rivet, and they've drawn together. When this thing was cooling down, you couldn't hear it because we had the volume kind of turned down. So we we're beating on it with the hammer. We weren't blowing your speakers. But this thing is clicking like a car exhaust when we got it. And I mean, I don't know if you can hear this, but... Um, yeah, this plate was a little hot. So you got to kind of watch where your hands are. All right. So we've got all this preliminary crap out of the way. Now we can get to the meat of this whole problem. This fits in a ridge down inside this plate. So we're going to walk this up in here. And that fits in from above, and we'll just massage this in. You can use the back side of your hammer when you want to move metal and not nick anything up. Okay. It's a tight fit, boys and girls. I'm going to tell you what. Let me get that down in there. And once all that lines up, and there it goes. This is pretty close. Excuse me while I whack it. What is the key to this thing? Ancient Chinese proverbs say, young man who loses girlfriend's door key gets no new key. Oh. The mind is strong, but your skills are weak. What is this weak ass shit? Hang on a minute here. Let's see if we can come in from the front. Maybe there's a secret. Yeah, there it is. That's it. It's a little bit tight down in there. You got to figure this gun's had the uh, had the crap abused out of it. There we go. All right, and I want to come down just a little bit more. Now I'm not hitting this very hard. It sounds like I am, but remember I'm hitting it with the wood on the back of the hammer. There's almost no mass back here. All the mass is up here, so I'm not rounding over corners. I'm not bending things. I'm not, I'm not abusing this side plate. I'm just tapping it and, and using the uh, concussion to move it to where it needs to be. Yeah, I just about got it moved right. Yeah, right there. What's holding this up there? It's almost like there's a burr in it. There's a burr in it. There it goes. Okay. Now, just like the original skyscraper builders... We can take a, uh, I'm hanging on a minute, I'm coming over here now to get a punch um, out of my box here, just a regular awl. And we can come in and we can just walk this plate into position. And as it turns out, what it's hanging up on, you see the silver hole here? Yeah, let me get this moved so, ah, there we go. This silver hole, one of these rivets is ground over flat so that this 1919 can fit on a 1917 tripod. At least that's how I understand it. Um, I try to do some research. So as it turns out, we're just kind of getting fought here. We'll walk it back and forth till we get it to where we want it. Yeah, this thing is really fighting me here. There we go. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm using this all as a spud. It's tapered. So as I drive it in, it's dragging these two pieces together. And I just about got it. Just about got it. 
like I said, this is like making sausage. If I have turned customers, I've had gentlemen standing in the shop that were the color of the light bulbs. These people turn white. You can't do that to that gun. Do what? Take it apart? No, you can't take that apart. Um, okay, it was apart at one time. I mean, uh, what do you? How do you think this gun got put together in the first place? But you can't do that. Oh yeah, I can do that. You don't like the speed I'm moving it now. Hey, on the top row over there, top row of the stand. Um, okay, two blue handle chisels up above it. There's this pair of red handle pliers. Right above the two blue handle chisels. Got it? Good deal. Thank you, sir. I had to have uh, Bruno go grab me a pair of insertion devices here. Because this is more like surgery. You would say, well, you know, what an archaic way to put a gun together. Are you kidding me? This thing going to be hell for stout when this gets done. There we go. Put that one in right there. That hole got a little oblong. Bink. So I'm inserting... Um, I'm inserting the rivets through the holes backwards, and then the bucking bar is going to go in behind it. Then this whole thing's going to get C-clamped together there and there. And then we're going to go down to the floor, and we're going to use the floor to buck this thing. Or maybe, I, I don't know, maybe I'll use the granite block. We'll see. But the floor weighs a lot more than that granite block does, and it's nice and solid, and that's the trick. You don't want any wasted, you don't want any lost Motion, I don't want to say wasted, that's the wrong word. You don't want any lost motion here. Okay, that's going to go through that way. Ah, my fingers are too fat. The older I get, the better I was. So um, I was up at Piedmont Tech teaching uh, checkering this weekend, or this week. Shout out to the guys up there. That was a hell of a class, guys. Really appreciated that. The longest walk in golf is from the first tee, from the practice tee to the first tee. The longest line you will ever cut in your entire life is the very first one. Because the minute you cut that first line of checkering, <laughs> you had done screwed that thing up, man. You have screwed it up. Come on, get in there. Let's. There we go. One in, one out. Keep going here. Y'all got to watch me fight this. Because there's any dumber, I'd have to be watered twice a week. Okay, here we go. Uh, put that up in there. The monitor is 90 degrees off axis to what I'm doing. So when I make an X axis, X axis move in an attempt to get in front of the monitor, I get a Y axis video move. How annoying. Okay, get up in there, you pile of crap. There we go. That one's in. And we'll see here. We keep going. That one there is going to be flush, so that'll work. That one there isn't lined up right, and this one there is going to work. We're going to have to drill that one. It's going to have to be drilled. Okay. We'll do a test fit here. Slip this bucking bar up in as we're going, and let that hold these other ones in place. Ha! I lost the one down there on the end. Okay. All right. Keep going here. All right, this is like watching paint dry, so I may cut you guys loose and cut to the chase here. What I'll do is take a drill bit, and uh, let's see, I need a slightly smaller size. One smaller standby while I go retrieve the piece I'm looking for. Drill motor's over here, right? Okay. Don't tighten anything up till you're ready to rock. There's... In addition to these rivet holes here, there's a top piece that has to be mounted uh, here that's going to go inside there. So there'll be two custom rivets up here on the wings. Then there'll be a long one that goes all the way through one of these guys. And then when we're all done and we got the trunnion block mounted in the front, we'll come back in and we'll put this big bad boy in and... Uh, that, that should be a, just an absolute ton of fun because to knock this one down, I'm either going to press it in my arbor press or I'm just going to tap it over with a hammer. But we'll see. That's going to be a lot of heat. We'll put the cutting torch head on it. All right, back after I get my act together. All right, I'm back. 
I just drilled a couple of holes here. The UPS guy walked in the door. Interruptions, interruptions, interruptions. So what I'm doing now is C-clamping this bucking bar to the bottom of the receiver. Okay. There is no such thing as a crappy weld if you've got a... Okay, so now I've got two C-clamps holding the bucking bar in. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rivets sticking out. We've inserted the, uh, the trunnion, and we know that this will come in here and slide through that. And we'll have to go in and individually ream all of that just to kind of hang on to it. But what I'm doing now is just kind of place holding. I'm just kind of place holding so that I know where... Uh, where everything goes and to make sure that I haven't just stuck a stuck a spear through me here All right, and this cover plate will wind up up here and A little bit spread apart because this bucking bar has got it really held up, but that's fine That'll go there That one will go in there This long one goes through the trunnion Let me see here. That one went up there. This long one goes through the trunnion hole here okay and then there are two rivets with their heads cut off I've got just the edge nicked off of this so that they can slide up in underneath these ears here there's um here maybe I can demonstrate this better if I take this out this is like a jigsaw puzzle so here we go up underneath here where the holes are right there you need to have the rivet can't sit down a round rivet won't sit in that hole there actually has to be the uh the, the, the head has to be cut off here i hope i'm in focus guys i'm trying real hard here because i'm doing all this moving around all right we're good so the next time we're uh we're back here we're gonna go ahead and get some heat on this thing i'm gonna put a bigger head on a torch because now i have all of this mass and i want more um i want more heat uh, that little that little itty bitty double zero flame is really good, but now when you get into these big honkers, man, these things here are going to need these big ones here are going to need a lot of heat. Keep going, get it good and hot. All right, that's good right there. Oh, next one, please. Heat. Next one in sequence. Keep going. Keep going. Just keep the center of that fire right on it. Keep going. All right, that's good. Right there. Next one, please. Oh. Our will is strong, but our skills are weak. Okay. All right. Keep going. Come down a little bit more. There you go. I need to rod that torch tip out. Keep going. I think get red all the way down into the bottom. That's good. I'm gonna to try to let you guys see one of these. No, no, go to the go to the next one in sequence. Go to the next one. Don't worry about that one. That's the one I want to do. I gotta do that one with a hammer. I'm gonna to try to let you. Okay, that's good. Come off. Take a look in the monitor. Can they see? Oop. Do that. Get it hot again. Can they see it in the monitor? Or is my elbow in the way? All right, that's cool. Keep going. Next one. All right. Something changed. Stop. Abort. Okay, we're going to stop here. we got to make a torch change. So hang on for a second. We're going to stay in the cut. Something changed here. i got to make an oxygen adjustment. Just me. Keep going. Next one in sequence. Here we go. Let's see if we can see that. Yeah, we can see it. All right, that's good. Next one.
Okay, come back a little bit. There we go. All righty. So now, what I'm going to do is you're going to hold this. You're going to give me the torch. You're going to feel the sweet spot. You feel the sweet spot? There's this place where it's sitting down flat, right? You're just going to hang on to that. I am going to drive this, this one in. And just remember that this hammer is getting real hot doing this. Okay, almost. Keep holding what you got. Because that's going to get that's going to get ground flat. I want to make sure when I grind it. I don't get any air spots. All righty, those are the those are the small rivets. Now we're gonna untweak this, let it cool off, and uh, come back and do the big ones. Yeah, a little too close. Don't worry about that, you just do this. By heating this metal up red hot and hitting it, we're just causing it to flow like so much Play-Doh down into the hole. Get a little hotter this time. Let it start sparkling, but don't let the base plate sparkle, only ahead of the rivet. All right. Yeah, buddy, that's us. All right. That leaves us with two little goofy ass rivets back up in here, uh, back here, these two guys. And we're, uh, and then this long one right here. So hang on a second. Let's. This long one right there. Hang on. Okay. We're going to drive that long one. I want to run it in from the other side, and I just screwed up and drove it into a plate that's so damn hot that if I touch it, I'll burn my fingers. Flame out. Oh, we're back again. Oh. Much hot flame. Oh. Yeah, I got it. For just right now, I want to see if this will drive. If I can do this, yeah, that'll be fine. Now, when you're hitting stuff with a hammer, in this close of proximity to that trunnion bolt hole, we know we're going to have to go in and possibly clean that hole up a little bit. Um, so far, and I'm going to curse myself by saying this, I have not touched the edge of that hole yet, but we'll round all this out. There's no such thing as a bad weld when you own a grinder, and 
we're gonna revisit this. We're gonna revisit this. Oh yeah, that seemed good. And once again, I'm not cracking on it real hard. I'm just dropping the hammer on it, letting the hammer do the work. And just filling up the crevice with this rivet. And we'll have to grind the inside of it off before we can use the same bucking bar on the other side. Outstanding. All right. You might ask, why am I, um, oh, I've got valves right here. Um, let's see here. So we're there. You might ask, why am I hitting these with a hammer and all those other ones, why was I hitting those with that rattler gun? And the answer is, the ones where I want to fill up the hole and then grind off flat are done with a hammer or with a press. It's more, uh, more interesting to watch me do it with a hammer, though, I think. If you do it with a press, you have to heat it up. And the tip that I was using to rattle those rivets, I'm not real impressed with that. And I might wind up having to go back and drill all those rivets out and start over again. Uh, just because I want the customer to have what he thought he was going to get. This weapon is here from another gunsmith. Um, and they had talked about it and they wanted me to do it. So when somebody demonstrates that kind of faith in your abilities, you need to uh, back that up by actually not turning out trained rat material. All right, all the hot work, all the hot work's done on this. I'm done on this unless I decide to go back after these rivets. I haven't decided what the hell I'm going to do back here. We're going to parkerize this thing, and I'm going to tell you what: no amount of sandblasting, no amount of parkerizing, seracoding, painting. Um, unobtainumizing, I don't care what you do, will hide crappy prep. No amount of shit will hide crappy prep. So I'm going to take a grinder and I'm going to cut the tops off these rivets that we've put in. Cut the tops off. Close. And then I'm going to come back with a sander and sand all this stuff out. So that when we do parkerize it, it just looks like one flat homogenous surface. What I want to make sure I don't do is nick the top of this plate up too much here and here. I don't want to nick it up, so I'm coming down close, and I'll go the rest of the way with the file. This is one of those how low do you want to go kind of deals, because what I don't want to do, are we focused right here? Yeah, we are. Um, <clears throat> what we don't want to do is have to do a lot of cleanup work on this surface plate. These things weren't these things weren't that 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 beautiful when they were put together the first time. The guys that put them together were flying, um, but you know that doesn't mean we can't have a little craftsmanship.
the important thing to note here is that after I've cut this thing down flush, there was 100% fill all the way around. There are no gaps. I did push all of the metal all the way into the recess. So let me see here. Let me see if I can get this cross lit for you. So I can cross light it right there. There's no gap. There we go. Right there. There's no gap. There's no line that you can see. I cannot conceivably light this. I'm looking in the monitor here while I'm trying to light it. Here we go. You, you can still see here that there's a very slight, if you listen, there's a very slight step there, but no circle. And I think we'll get them all. We got good rivet fill out. These are fabulous joints. This thing is drawn together pretty damn tight. So I'm going to keep grinding. And then when I switch over to the sanding wheel, I'll come back out and show you where we'll come in and we'll sand all this so that it's uniform. Then once we've gotten it sanded, then we can sandblast and then we can go to the park tanks. All right, I'm starting to clean up with files here. There we go. We got a little bit of cleanup we're going to have to do there because kind of ding the hole, but I'll go ahead and round that back up and we'll just continue here. You can see no, there's no, uh, no ridges, no lines around here. This is going to be absolutely, when we're done parkerizing this, these rivets will disappear. Okay. <sighs> smooth, smooth. Got to watch. I've got really thick calluses, but there are sharp burrs here that get raised. You get a nasty little cut. So this is baking the cake again. Right now we got the kitchen messed up. The owner of this weapon is watching this video right now going, Oh my God, he ruined my 1919. No, I didn't have faith. Have faith. I flipped it over on the other side here. Something you got to remember is you got to watch. You don't do too good of a job on this thing. There's blobs of of uh, weld. There's all kinds of stuff. You, you you need to blend and look natural. You need to be able to get in and get out without um, without uh, uh, leaving a trace, and that's the whole trick.
That's not too bad. All right, I'm going to tell you what. I made a cutter. These rivets were too big for this. They're supposed to be quarter inch. The flanges were too big. So I made a cutter in the lathe, went around the outside, and I'm going to tell you what. This is former IDF equipment. So all I got to say is, oi, vey, holy shit. I only got to do it seven more times now. Not a big deal. Uh, because of the weight of this equipment, I wasn't sent the gut. So you're not missing out on firing. And all they wanted was a semi-auto side plate tacked onto it. New love. Oh, baby. Hey, because we're doing a repost, I found some photographs that happened after this episode was taped. And we can see here some of the photos that I took with the raw receiver and barrel as they're being degreased and prepped for, let's say, parkerizing, which we did. So when this gun got done, it was fully parked and it went back out to a customer um, who then put the internals in it. I never got to see it work. But I have to tell you, it was not a half bad job considering how hard I was wailing on it. Thanks a lot, and I'm, I'm thank you for enjoying this again. And uh, we'll keep we'll keep reposting. Thank you.